Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I want to put together a video that I've been seeing a little bit on booktube and that I really enjoy watching uh, and that is a five star predictions video. I think these are really fun. I really enjoy watching uh, my favorite booktubers make these five star predictions and kind of predicting myself based on their tastes and the things that I've seen them talk about if I think that they're going to like the books and think that they're five stars. I'm, I picked a few books from my own shelves. So these are probably books that I have talked about at some point in some video because I really want to try to cut down on buying new books until I can read the ones that I have. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. And I am gonna talk about one arc that I have uh, that I think will be five stars, or I hope will be five star reads for me. And I'm hoping to read all of these in the next two to three months so that I can come back and do a follow up video uh, talking about if they were five stars and kind of compare them side by side. So the first book is one that I picked up in a recent book haul, and that is Firestarter by Stephen King. So this is one of the books by King that I haven't read before. It's a dystopian type book about a young girl who has pyrokinetic powers. And at least from listening to Mike talk about it on Mike, Mike's book reviews, it sounds like it might be a little bit Stranger Things-esque, and maybe they got some of the inspiration uh, for Eleven from this book. But I will be honest, like a lot of Stephen King's fantasy oriented or fantasy-esque novels are five stars for me. Um, I love his writing. There are definitely some books that have been misses and they're not all instant five stars, but this one seems like it has a bunch of the things that he writes about that I really, really enjoy. So I'm very hopeful that this will be a five star read. And I actually am reading this one next month in May for a readathon that I'm doing. So I am looking forward to reading it and can't wait to see if it is in fact a five star read read for me. The next book that I have here is one that I've wanted to read for quite a while and that is The Winter King by Bernard Cornwell. So I love Arthurian retellings. They are some of my favorite stories. It is my favorite um, I guess mythical hero or legendary hero to read about and I have heard that these books are very much like historical fiction. Um, I guess they are historical fiction. I think they actually are not even cl classified as uh, a fantasy, but I've heard such great things. I know these are a big inspiration for John Gwynn, whose writing I really enjoy. Um, and I've heard that the battle scenes and that Bernard Cornwell just writes really good battle scenes in general, which I always love about historical fiction or fantasy. Uh, so really looking forward to this. This is the first book in a trilogy and is kind of the last major Arthurian retelling, uh, or at least like the really, really popular ones that I have not read. So really looking forward to reading this. And then when it's done, I'm hoping to put together a video, kind of a reader's guide to Arthurian legend and talk about some of the different types of books that are out there for different reading tastes. So hopefully this one is a five star. Uh, the next is a work of nonfiction, and I talked about this um, in a previous video, I believe, because I had been hoping to read it, and that is H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. So this book, I think, is part memoir uh, and is about the author losing her father and dealing with the grief of losing her father, but then also talking about her experience training a hawk and reading about T.H. White's experience, so T.H. White being the author of The Once and Future King, his experience of training his own hawk. And I think it is the intermingling of those three threads of story. And I've heard that the writing is exquisite in this. I've heard it's very poignant, very moving. And obviously it, it caused a lot of buzz when it was first released a number of years ago. And it's one of those books that has sat on my TBR for a really long time that I haven't gotten around to picking up and I think what has been holding me back a little bit is that I have been consuming so many of my works of nonfiction by audiobook and I don't want to listen to this one because I want to read it and I'm not good at doing that immersive reading thing that people do where they read the audiobook and read the book at the same time because I want to read a lot quicker than they're narrating the audiobook um, so I'm going to read it 
it probably won't be next month but I'm hoping that I can read it in July so over the summer I'm hoping that I can read this one and I really think that it's going to end up being five stars for me at least I hope so uh, the next is another book that I'm going to be reading next month and that is Tigana by Guy Gabriel K um, I have gotten so many comments about Tigana on the channel especially when I did my uh, my video about prose, the Fantasy Masterclass prose version, because I have heard wonderful things about Guy Gabriel Kay's prose. So I have had this book for a long time as well because, well, number one, Guy Gabriel Kay is Canadian, so I would really love to read more Canadian fantasy, more Canadian written fantasy. Um, this is a favorite book for so many people, so many of the booktubers I admire and my friends in real life really love this book and so I want to get to it. I don't know what it is that has been holding me back for all of this time. Maybe it's the size. I'm not I'm not sure, but I am 100% reading it next month because I'm reading it as part of a read along with Alan's channel. So, it is going to happen and I really really hope that it is 5 stars for me. Another fantasy I have here is The Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. Uh, so I think I talked about this book in my very first book haul on the channel and I actually picked it up because my daughter's name is Juliette and I really love that name and so when I saw that the author's name was Juliette and it was historical fantasy, I thought, well, I'll buy it. It's got a beautiful cover. I love the green cover. I like that the author's name is Juliet, which I understand is a silly reason to buy a book, but here we are. Uh, and it, it really does sound like something that I would like. It is kind of a fairy tale retelling, uh, historical based fantasy. There's a lot about family relationships. I've heard that there's a very um, good romance subplot in this. So I am really looking forward to reading it. And I really do think that I will love it. I love this historical based fantasy uh, with soft magic systems and forest setting love it those are some of my favorite things in fantasy and so i really really hope that i love this one and this is part of a trilogy i believe but a series most definitely so if i love it then i will have other books to go on and read which i always enjoy uh, next in my pile i guess we'll do the last fantasy book that i have then i have a couple of non-fantasy ones uh, this is another arthurian uh, retelling and this is lancelot by uh, gilles christian or Giles, Giles, not sure. I default to, to the French French pronunciation. Um, but this is another Arthurian retelling centered around Lancelot, which I think is gonna be a fun contrast because I think the Lancelot that's portrayed in Bernard Cornwell's Arthurian books is a very unlikable character, at least from some of the videos I've seen from the Brothers Gwyn. Uh, so it will be, I think, quite the contrast to go from a book where Lancelot is painted as a villain, which, you know, based on mythology is definitely a possibility, uh, to this book, which is centered around Lancelot, where presumably he is not a villain. Uh, although I guess anything is possible. But I've heard that this has really beautiful writing. I know Patrick really loves this and this is one of his favorite Arthurian retellings. Uh, so it was on his recommendation that I picked this up, but I am really looking forward to reading it and I really hope that I love it. And I believe this one has a companion novel as well. So I, I just hope that these are all five stars so I can have even more wonderful books to pick up and read. Um, I guess I'll talk about the arc now because that is also fantasy and then the last couple are non-fantasy books. Uh, but I did get approved for an arc of The Hand of the Sun King, which is a book that Patrick gave a glowing review to on his channel. So I'll link that review down here. Um, as if anybody who's watching this doesn't know who Patrick is, but still I will link it down there. Um, and I just really, it sounded really good. He told me a little bit about it and it, I thought that it sounded like a beautiful novel. He said the writing is really beautiful and apparently it centers around calligraphy, which I really enjoy. So I find uh, working on calligraphy and hand lettering to be very soothing. And I will do that often. I will practice that as I'm either listening to audiobooks or just for fun, like if my husband's playing um, is gaming, then I will kind of sit beside him and work on my hand lettering. So I think it's really fascinating that there is a fantasy novel that has hand lettering as part of the world building. And I really am looking forward to it and seeing uh, what it's like. 
but I really hope just based on how much Petrick loved that and some of the early buzz that it's getting that it will be a five star read for me and I will be reading that one next month too so very exciting. Uh, the last two books that I have are non-fantasy, the first of which I did mention in my last book haul. So this is World of Wonders, um, and I am super excited to read this one. So I don't know if anybody could tell, but there's a very furtive eye glance. And then I had a friend arrive at home. I went out for a walk. So if I'm looking a little bit uh, disheveled, it's quite windy outside, but I will finish the last two books now instead of re-recording the whole video. But I was talking about World of Wonders. This is nonfiction focused on the natural world. I've heard the language is very beautiful. I love books about animals and about nature. So I really do think this is quite short, but I think it will be a five star book for me. And I'm also planning to read this one in June. And for the very last book, I have Things Fall Apart, which is a work of literary fiction. This makes a ton of lists like 100 best novels of all time, 100 best works of literary fiction, and I've been wanting to read it for a really long time and finally found this really beautiful copy um, that looks almost new in the used bookstore that recently opened up in my town. So I am really, really, really looking forward to reading this. It is also quite short, uh, so I don't think it will take too much time to get through. I don't have it penciled into my readathon TBR for June, so hopefully I can read this one over the summer as well. And I really love literary fiction after fantasy. It is my favorite genre to read. And I've heard so many good things about this book that I really am looking forward to reading it. If you have read this one, which um, again, I know a lot of people come to talk about fantasy, but if you have read this, then please let me know because I'd like to get some perspective and see what people enjoyed if they enjoyed it. Uh, but those are my five star predictions, hopefully for the books that I'm going to read over the next couple of months. If you're looking forward to reading these books, then please let me know. If you have read any of them and you agree that they will be five star reads or you totally disagree and I'm in for a really bad surprise, then let me know that as well. But I will see you with another video soon. Bye.